Welcome, you random internet traveler. This is your warning from Squidman. Now is your last chance to turn back. Once you know and love Splatoon, there is no returning to normal. Also, if you're one of my volleyball friends, hello, hello. I hope you find this information enough help to understand the wonderful world of Splatoon and why my volleyball jersey has the name Squid on the back. For everyone else, let's dive into Splatoon. We will discover what Splatoon is, more so than the colorful third-person shooter on Nintendo's newest console. In the game, game of Splatoon. You take control of an inkling or an octling in an attempt to slay both on the battlefield as well as with your sense of fashion. Players use their main weapon, their variety, to ink the ground. When you run out of ink, not bullets in Splatoon, you need to reload, right? Wrong. In Splatoon, you must swim through your ink to refill your tank again. This makes covering the floor all the more important. If you're an inkling, when you go into swim floor, you become a squid. When you're an octoling, you turn into a little octopus to swim around in your ink. To start, listen up for some quick fire rundown. I'll quickly go over the game modes of Splatoon. First up, we got Turf War. It's like a paintball fight on steroids where two teams of four players compete to cover the most area of the map with their ink within three minutes. It's so fast paced you'll be seeing stars and no, I'm not talking about Pearl. During a special weekend, everyone is required to play this game mode as part of a Splatfest event. We'll get to that later. Next up, we got Ranked, also called Anarchy Battles in Splatoon 3. It's for the competitive types out there. It's like a buffet of game modes. Pick your poison. Five minutes of Splat Zones, Tower Control, Rainmaker, and Clam Blitz. It's designed to make you sweat. For all you teamwork and zombie enthusiasts, we got Salmon Run. It's like a corporate retreat, but with zombified fish and ink explosive. Just remember, there's no I in team, but there is an L in Salmon Run. Let's not forget Story Mode, Star the game's idols and spoiler, spoiler, spoilers. If you are brand new to Splatoon and turn on motion controls, go beat the story mode to start. Lastly, Splatoon 3 also introduced Table Turf, which is a card game based off the original Turf War mode. Now, we'll go over in detail over each of these wonderful game modes. Turf War. Ladies and gentlemen, hold on to your seats because Turf War is about to get wild. On one side, we have one team, the ink slinging, turf taking machines, ready to paint the area with their color. And on the other, we have the other team, Underdogs, looking to make a splash and surprise everyone else. The objective of Turf War is simple, folks. Cover as much of the arena with your team's color ink as possible. Let me tell you, it's not for the faint of heart. These teams will need to use everything in their arsenal, from paint rollers to shooters, blasters to chargers, each with their own unique abilities and ink coverage. That's not all. Each player even has a special ability like inkjet, crab tank, or vacuum, or tide pod that can help quickly change the flow of battle. Turf War has three minutes, and at the very end of it, the team with the most ink coverage wins. But let me tell you, it's not just about covering the arena with ink. Players must be strategic and work together as a team to effectively cover the map and defend their territory from the opposing team. It's one colorful brawl. It's a timed turf. So grab your favorite gamer juice, lean forward, and earn your territory. Splatfest, my dear colleagues, are a fascinating cultural phenomenon within the realm of Nintendo games. They represent a unique blend of competition and community. As players are divided into teams and tasked with inking the most territory within a designated time frame. Much is the same in traditional turf war, is it not? No. For what set Splatfest apart from the other multiplayer modes in Splatoon is the thematic element. Players are given the opportunity to align themselves with one of the opposing concepts, such as cats versus dogs, or rock versus paper versus scissors. These choices are not only a reflection of individual preferences, but also serve as a means of self-expression and identity within the game's community, or perhaps their undying obsession with their respective idol's forehead. Furthermore, the weekend-long duration of this event, the idol's glorious solos, as well as the accompanying musical performances, special gear, and so on, all serve to create a sense of temporal and spatial immersion. It's not just about winning the match, it's about winning as a part of the collective experience. In a sense, one could argue that Splatfests are a form of contemporary tribalism, where players come together under a shared banner and engage in symbolic combat. Like any other form of tribalism, it promotes a sense of belonging and camaraderie amongst its members. It's a testament to the game's creators that they are able to tap into this primal human desire for belonging and 
competition in such a creative and engaging way. Splatfests are a true showcase of the social dynamics that make gaming such a powerful medium. Splat Zones. In this five minute frenzy, teams go head to head to control a designated area or areas of the map known as Splat Zones. The goal is simple. Cover them with your team's ink. It's like turf war on steroids confined to an awfully tight space. To capture a zone, players must gotta get in there and unleash their ink upon that zone. Once a zone is covered in its team's ink, it starts filling up with that color. But here's the kicker. Once the team ink reaches the 70%, the zone is captured. The ink becomes fully one color in the zone and the zone countdown starts clicking down. The team that holds the zone for the longest amount of time or expires their zone countdown wins. Now here's where things get really interesting. You can't just capture a zone, then sit back and relax. Oh no, you gotta defend. If the enemy team's ink starts overlapping yours, the zone can become neutralized. When this happens, the timer stops counting down. And you're kicking yourself for not paying enough attention. Capturing, defending these zones is not an easy feat. It takes strategy, teamwork, and good communication. But trust me, the rush of adrenaline and the feeling of victory is worth it. Grab your paint rollers, let's get inking. Take the zone, keep the zone. Tower Control. In the thrilling and high stakes game of Tower Control, two teams of four ink slinging warriors engage in an epic struggle to conquer a towering behemoth of a structure. Just kidding, it's kind of small. The tower moves along a predetermined path through the battlefield. The path is mirrored with one end leading to each team's base. As the game begins, the tower sits smugly at the center of the stage, daring any brave souls to try and tame it. Once a player manages to ascend the tower and plant themselves upon it. The tower comes to life, lurching and lumbering towards the enemy's stronghold. Alongside a playful little jingle. But be warned, any opponent who dares to stand upon the tower while it's being clammed will cause it to stop and halt in its tracks. If the player on the tower is splatted or falls off, the tower will pause before retreating back to the starting point. This makes players on the tower a constant target. It's up to their teammates on the ground to defend them from the enemy's onslaught. The match ends in glorious victory for one team who rides the tower all the way along the path and through the checkpoints to the enemy's base. So gather your comrades, sharpen your ink-colored weapons, and prepare for a fierce and unforgettable battle as you fight to control the little singing tower in its test of strategy, skill, and teamwork. Rainmaker. In this five minute ranked mode, the two teams face off in fierce competition to capture the golden bazooka carp, the legendary Rainmaker itself. This powerful weapon is your key to victory and you'll need to work together with your teammates to capture it, protect it, and escort it to the enemy's podium. The first step in capturing the Rainmaker is to ink the shield surrounding it and make it explode in your team's color. But wow, the explosion is so powerful it can send your opponents flying all the way back to their Spot. Once the shield is down and the Rainmaker is yours, it's time to work together and defend the Rainmaker carrier at all times. The carrier can also use the Rainmaker to fire slow giant blasts of ink to carve a path to the podium and splat enemy players. You need to push the Rainmaker towards enemy's base to score points. The team that successfully delivers the Rainmaker past the Rainmaker checkpoint and on towards the enemy's base podium or gets closest to the enemy podium with Within five minutes, wins the match. Clam Blitz, ladies and gentlemen, gather around and keep listening closely, for I shall regale you with the grandiose and glorious objective of the five minute ranked mode, Clam Blitz. The task at hand, my friends, is to scour the stage for clams, those succulent mollusks of the sea, and deposit them in the coveted goal, which most refer to as basket. We call it the grand prize, ultimate destination, the golden chalice of victory, located in the base of your enemy team, collecting the clam. At the start of the match, a plethora of clams, about 30, shall be scattered around the center of the stage, just waiting for a brave and daring octoling or inkling to come and claim them as their own. Pick them up by getting close and let them trail behind you like a train of triumph as you saunter through the stage in humanoid form. Normal clams shall disappear while you are swimming. Once you have gathered a bountiful harvest of eight clams, or dead in the old game, they shall be transformed into the mighty power clam, a weapon of mass destruction capable of destroying the protective barrier 
you're around the enemy team's bastion and paving the way for glory and triumph. You must score a power clam if you and your teammates want to score normal clam. Clams and power clams can be thrown with the press of the A or L button. Passing clams to your teammates and enemy players is acceptable, except that you can only pass normal clams to enemies. Be aware. If you are splattered while you're holding your clams, the coveted clams shall be spread upon the battlefield for others to pick up. If you have a power clam, it's simply fumbled at that point. In Splatoon 3, you're also allowed to jump back to base in an emergency with your clams, power or otherwise. Scoring. In Clam Blitz, the glory of breaking your opponent's barrier with a power clam awards a mighty 20 points and lifts your team barrier, preventing the enemy team from scoring points. Normal clams thrown into the opposing team's open basket earns three points each. The barrier stays open for around 10 seconds and throwing a clam into it raises the timer back by three seconds. But it cannot extend that timer more than 10 seconds. Throwing a power clam resets the basket timer entirely. When the timer expires, the enemy team's basket lifts to generate the barrier for 10 seconds while the scoring team's barrier drops immediately, making it easier for a counterattack. If the barrier goes up before the scoring team gets to 100, a penalty is also imposed. Simply put for a clam blitz, grab the clams and chuck them into a basket before the other team does. Although I have a lot to say about story mode, I believe it's best to save it for another video. Before you dive deep into the world of turf and ranked, I highly recommend going and playing story mode. It's a super fun way to get a handle on the controls, weapons, and specials in the game. There's not the pesky pressure of all the teammates depending on you. Think of it as a warm up before your main event of the game. Table turf. Table turf is where it's at. With your custom deck of cards, You'll be adding ink patterns to a grid-like board, competing to see who can cover the most space with ink. It's a battle of strategy and skill as you unleash your special points as well, trying to outmaneuver your opponents to claim victory. I have another video that does go more in depth, so be sure to check that one out. Each mode offers different gameplay experiences, so players will enjoy Splatoon. So come on in and join me for more Squid Game fun. I have videos on weapons, as well as me and my friends just having a good old time. Other videos will cover lots Lockers, gear abilities, the idols, and so much, much more. I stream the game weekly on YouTube and on Twitch. So subscribe and learn more and join me for this squid game adventure of Splatoon. It's a squid bin. Stay fresh, no dying. I'll be the boy today.